Good morning. This is the ramblings of an Indiscipline Mind podcast for Friday, December 4th, 2015. So I've got my Starbucks here today. Because it's Friday. Oh, Lord, I am so glad today is here. I'll be so glad when the work portion of today is done. Yesterday, I had some stuff I had to get done uh, for a training class. I'm giving at 9 this morning. I had the right documentation. I had to get a PowerPoint from the documentation, blah, 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 blah. And it was just kind of like Bug Keith Day. And so I was feeling just like, am I going to get enough time to get this done? Am I going to have to get into work today at, you know, four in the morning to finish this? But no, I was able to get it done yesterday. So I was feeling pretty good about that. I'm going to, I'm going to read through it this morning real quick before I get in to the class. So yeah, that's good. That's good. I started working, uh, actually words on paper of the digital variety. Uh, lyrics for Nano Funk. I'm looking forward to doing that. I'm trying to, and I got to get my thoughts turned toward a pirate carol. It's quite possible that I might have to put Nano Funk down and, and get the pirate carol going because obviously there is a bit of time sensitivity to the pirate carol. Just a little bit. Anyway. So, what was I going to talk about today? Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to talk about today. Um, I will say that I'm, I'm feeling pretty happy. I have, my last, I have my last class for the finance class that I have to be on ground for. So, I've got a little homework quiz thing i gotta, I got to do. I'm gonna, actually planning on doing that tonight. And then I've got the final exam, which I'm going to do uh, probably a week from tonight or next Friday. And then I'm done with this semester. And uh, the peasants rejoiced. Yes, they did. Woo! What I thought I'd talk about today, though, was I started a series called Mistborn. It's written by Brandon Sanderson. And and I wanted to read something that was just his because I liked how he finished up with um, The Wheel of Time. Because he was the guy that they brought in after um, Robert Jordan's death. I think I'm getting the names right here. To finish it up. And and I enjoyed the, the last trio of books that he wrote. And I thought, you know, I need to check out this guy's work. His own work. Where he's not emulating somebody else's style. And I think he did do a bit of that with The Wheel of Time. So, I, you know, now that I've read something of his... I, I, I think he did a bit of that. But, so I started this series called Mistborn. And, and I mainly started it because it was, it was, because it was available. Uh, the wife borrowed it from a friend of ours named Brian. He had the series. He, he's been a, he was the guy who um, loaned us Hyperion. So thus far, he's batting a thousand when it comes to books, sci-fi and fantasy books to read, so... And she finished up with it, and I thought, you know, it's probably as good a time as any, and so I, I started reading it. And, you know, he does probably the most important thing with a fantasy novel that's going to have any kind of magic in it, if you want to call it magic, uh, and that he came up with a very unique system. It's not called magic in the books. It's a... It's a skill, it is a talent that you're born with called allomancy. A-L-L-O-M-A-N-C-Y, or maybe C-E-Y. Not sure. So, you know, the basic premise is that, is that you gain powers by burning, and I hope you heard the air quotes, metals and certain people can do this you've got two basically two classes of of people you've got the 
you've got the, the noble, the highborn, and and they have um, alamancers, you know, runs in, in, in that blood. So most of the nobleborn have, uh, or, or at least a good percentage of the nobleborn have uh, uh, alamancy in their heritage. And, 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 you know, are alamancers themselves. And then you've got the peasants, which are called the ska. And they are not supposed to. Because they are not supposed to have any noble blood. You know, it, th this is a rather brutal world, at least if you're ska, because, you know, noble men are allowed to dally with ska women if they so choose. And believe me, they so choose. But uh, there are also chars under the law to kill the women once they're done to prevent any mixed blood uh, children from being born. So let me get back to the magic system. So if, if you've got some noble blood in you, you can be an alamancer and you can burn these metals. So it's kind of unclear if you are really burning them in the sense of you got a fire. I'm guessing not because the metals have to be inside you. And they're not necessarily big quantities of metals. They're pretty small quantities of metals. But they'll drink um, you know, a vial with water in it that's got a series of these metals. And then they will, they will, will burn them. They'll all start when they start using them. Uh, and the burn analogy works because it only lasts so long. Different metals have got different burn rates. And we'll, you know, so you can burn it and last longer. Um, you can flare your metal, meaning that you're, you're more intensely burning it. It'd be kind of like maybe throwing lighter fluid on a fire. It might cause the word wood to burn faster, you know, kind of thing. And different metals give you different abilities. And so you've got people that are called mistings that have one ability. They can burn one metal, which gives them one ability. And then you've got these other people called Mistborn that can burn all the metals. And so the main metals that you deal with are, and I'll stick with what I've learned in the, well, I guess I did learn that in the first book. The main metals, you, you got Pewter, which, gives, which increases strength and um, endurance. You've got Tin, which increases perception. You've got steel, which enables you to pull on other metal objects. And that's interesting because you can, if, if, if you are a steel puller, as they call them, or you're a misborn who can do steel pulling, um, and there's something metal, there's like a window clasp or closure a far away, you can pull against that, and since that's set into a building, it's non-movable, you're gonna get pulled toward it. And then you've got iron pushing, where you know, so iron is the metal it's doing, and, and that will push against metal. So they can literally do things like, they can throw a coin down on the, on the ground and then push against it with this, with this power, and that will send them flying into the sky because the coin can't move, it's on the ground. So there's a lot of cool physics stuff going on here as far as what's going to happen to you if you're like pushing against something and maybe it was like set into a wall but then it breaks away, you know, or you push against something and it is Im immobile and you aren't, um, you aren't expecting it to be immobile so therefore you get the opposite reaction thing that physics teaches us and suddenly you go flying. You know, by dint of this iron pushing and steel pulling, they can affect a form of flight that's not unlike Spider-Man's flying around, swinging from web to web, where you know, each, he, you know he's on one web and he's swinging, and as he's coming up his arc, he's, he's shooting the next one so he can transfer to that web. It's kind of similar with the only difference being that instead of webs, the, the characters are either pushing or pulling on, either pushing against a coin that they've dropped, or they're pulling on some metal fixture somewhere to keep themselves moving. 
Um, so that's that, 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 that. and gold gives you strange um, perceptions of your past. I think I'm missing. I think well, you know, the pewter and the tin and the iron and the steel are kind of the big four. You've got gold, which gives you some strange, um, some strange visions of your past. There are some minor spoilers here for book one, I'll say. Uh, there's this metal called atrium, atium, A-T-I-U-M, I think. There's no R. In my head, I kept thinking atrium, but there's no R. Atium, something like that. And that gives you the ability to see a couple seconds in the future what people are going to do. You see, like, these shadowed images of what they're going to do. So then you can very easily dodge that sword swing or whatever because you've seen it in advance enough time to react. So, you know, the basic story is, is you've got this, you got this girl, she's like, I don't know, 17 or 18, and she's, her name is Vin. Oh, and then you've got metals that let you, they call it soothing or rioting emotions. So you can dampen emotions, or you can raise emotions. I forget what metals. I think bronze, no, bronze is something else. I forget which metals control those, but you can do that. And so she has been part of, for all her life, with her brother, part of a, a, a number series of, uh, of criminal gangs and her brother has left her and so she's just she's hanging on because she has what she terms luck which is really like uh, turns out to be what, what, what is called soothing she can she can soothe the emotions of whoever the mark is for whatever particular con her gang boss is doing and she can um, you know, make them react favorably, which makes the con work, and then they get money, and everybody's happy. So this luck is something she has in very small, small amounts. Uh, it's just something she's done ex- instinctively, and it turns out later that. So I, I remembered just now. Um, so the soothing is pewter, is the metal. Um, and so she would get a little bit of pewter because they would use like pewter plates and pewter cups. So she gets some trace amounts. So over time, enough of this material would build up in her system that she had enough where she could do a little bit of soothing. Um, she ends up uh, running into this guy named Kelsier, who is a gang boss of his own of kind of a rather um, enlightened Ocean's Eleven kind of kind of uh, team. Um, so, you know, with her team, think maybe like Oliver, <laughs> as far as this kind of scum of the earth criminal team, and then, like I said, Ocean's Eleven for Kelsier's team, uh, full of interesting and and ultimately, you know, friendly characters. Uh, and he is a Mistborn, so he can do all of these things. Uh, there's some other, actually, a couple other ones I, I remembered is that there's also uh, copper. And when you burn copper, that hides the fact that you are burning metals. And if you burn bronze, then you can detect people that are burning metals, provided they aren't burning copper. Uh, well, it seems to me the bronze would then be kind of worthless because wouldn't... And it's kind of accepted practice that if you're an alamancer, you're pretty much burning copper all the time. That's a process called smoking. You're hiding your abilities in a smoke cloud, if you will. So, you know, the basic plot is that Kelsier is getting together a, a team to, instead of being a thieving team, which is what they're usually doing, they've been hired by the, the leader of the Ska Rebellion. And there's been Ska Rebellions... For, for you know for hundreds of years because there's this you know thing called the the final empire who is ruled by this all-powerful uh, allometric allo allomancer I guess I'll say because I don't can't say the other word who has been who is immortal and has been reigning for a thousand years who just goes by the name of Lord ruler but he's perpetrating all sorts of nastiness uh, he's got these uh, creatures called obligators work for him and called and these other guys called steel inquisitors 
which are like uh, Alamancers times 10, and they are really hard to fight. They've got all these weird spooky powers, like they've had huge spikes driven through their eyeballs. So they don't have eyes anymore. They got the heads of these big spikes or nails, and the tips of the spikes are, are poking out the back of their head. And they are kind of the enforcement arm, the secret police, if you will, of, of Lord Rulers. And so Kelsier has been hired by the, the most recent iteration of the Scott Rebellion, because it's kind of like, you know, Zion in, in the Matrix, where they rise up every, every you know, 100 or two years, and then Lord Ruler stomps them down. But Kelsier thinks he's got a plan to, to do this and actually kill Lord Ruler. We find out later he's got a bit of a, a, of a grudge against him and he wants to do this. He wants to get this done. So he's kind of taking a break from his usual you know, fevery to do something with a little bit bigger purpose. And, and he runs across Vin because he notices her doing her soothing and uh, things happen and she ends up becoming part of his team where she learns that she's really a misborn. And that what she was doing was, was soothing and that she was burning metals and that she can also burn these other metals. And so she becomes part of his team. And her job is to dress up in pretty gowns and go to uh, balls and infiltrate the nobility. Now this is about as far from what Vim would like as possible because you know she's a street urchin. She grew up with an abusive brother who has since abandoned her. Um, she's always on the edge of getting raped by other team members that you know, realize, hey, there's a girl in her mess. So she is very accomplished at being small and meek and trying not to be noticed, even though she doesn't feel small and meek. I mean, she's, she's not a big person physically, but, you know, she, you know, her, her, her mental capacity her mental ability, her mental, her personality isn't to be small and meek, but she's learned that behavior as a survival mechanism. But once she starts to get comfortable and with Kelsier's crew and all this, she begins to see her true side where, you know, she's more willing to assert herself, but at the same time, she's all about doing what she has to do to survive. And playing the part of a noble woman kind of pushes at that a little bit because it's like the almost the exact opposite. Going from trying to be small and insignificant and beneath notice to now you're trying to garner attention and make people notice you. And of course, you know, the whole thing ends with this, you know, big climactic battle to, to try to take down Lord Ruler. It's a really interesting book. Uh, the Manzik system is a big part of it, uh, and and that continues into the second book. I've started the second book, uh, but but it's really all about the fight to take down Lord Ruler. And is that even possible? You've got a number of people in this crew that do different things. You've got another. He's got another mist, a number of mistings there. You got you got uh, uh, a guy who is a smoker, so he provides a. A hideout and he's got some apprentices and they're all smokers so they're burning copper so you can stay there and live there and nobody's gonna notice you because there's always somebody burning copper providing a smoke screen over that particular building he's got a soother a master soother that's on his team he's got what's called a thug which is a misting that can burn pewter and therefore be very strong um, and then it's him and Ven there's a couple other people there too. There's him and Vin as Mistborn, and they can do it all. Maybe not necessarily as well as one of these people that is specialized by nature of their abilities, but you know, somebody that can only burn pewter is better at it. You know, a soother is better at soothing because that's all he does. He's a specialist. Than a Mistborn, which is more of a generalist who can do soothing, but it may not be you haven't practiced it as much, and so you're not as good at it, kind of thing. So anyway, I have gone long here. I know I have. I, I think it's an interesting, interesting series. The the characters are really well, really well written. Um, you know, 
you spend a lot of time with Kelsey here, but really the main character is Vin, and she's kind of she's kind of learning what it is to to be in a different reality. She's got a brother who's been talking all her life about how you can't trust anybody, and she's now she's struggling with the concept that maybe she has friends, and maybe she's falling in love at some point, um, and not with who you probably think. You know, and, and, and Kelsier is this man that he's been through hell and he, he's driven to do this, but his method is a little surprising toward the end there. And and it's just a really interesting read. So if you if you're looking for a good fantasy book that you know doesn't necessarily have the the Lord of the Rings kind of vibe, um, because nobody's innocent here. There's no innocence to be lost because nobody is innocent. Which is one of the things that makes the characters interesting. You know, they're not necessarily evil, but they're not innocent. So uh, he he pulls it off well. So uh, Mistborn is the first book in the series by Brandon Sanderson. I would recommend you pick it up. But I am longer than I really wanted to be, so I'm going to stop now. For which you are welcome. Anyway, I will be back tomorrow, and I'll be talking to you then. So. Be seeing you.